Woo! Welcome everyone. My name is Kitty for those who are new and I run a production company in California and I also play with camera gear from time to time. But today's a little bit different because we're gonna be testing video footage with two flagship smartphones. We have the Pixel 4 and the Apple iPhone 11 Pro Max. We're gonna be testing apples to oranges and since I love tequila so much, we're gonna be making some tequila cocktails. And also, just as a bonus, we're gonna throw in a little DSLR footage in there as well. We're gonna be using the Nikon Z6. All right, let's roll the B-roll clips. So the reason why I chose this location is this I really love a cement countertop and also the way the light reflects from it. It gives these like nice subtle shadows that I'm really looking forward to check out. This plant is positioned here so it's gonna give me some interesting foreground that I could work with. And I know this doesn't have an ultra wide lens so we're just gonna roll with it as is. Don't add a moment lens but if you do want ultra wide, I highly suggest a moment lens. I did a video on that here. Anyways, we are not gonna be using any phone gimbals. We're gonna go all handheld to see how the stabilization on each phone does for this. All right, we're gonna be testing out the Pixel 4 and doing an orange tequila cocktail. So, let's go. it's Apple time. You guys been giving me so much crap about how I have a Pixel and I don't have an iPhone. So let me really see, from my perspective, if this is really worth the crazy video capabilities that you guys always claim it can do. So, Apple tequila. <laughs> I feel like was struggling just a little bit more with the autofocus maybe because I'm getting so freaking close and getting these detail shots obviously if you're shooting a lot of wides and like landscapes it's not gonna be an issue but just testing out here maybe because it's a little bit more low light and not during the broad daylight it's struggling just a tad but that's what I noticed for sure image stabilization I found is a lot better on the iPhone 11 on the pixel 4 however it was a little bit difficult to get my hands really stable of course if you use a gimbal will be a lot easier. Now for shits and giggles, we're gonna bring out the Nikon Z6, which is like probably not fair, but we're gonna see the difference anyway. All right, for the cocktail of the day for the Nikon Z6, we're doing something really, really fancy. <laughs> I had an ISO of like 10,000 just now and I was still shooting at 120 frames per second, which is insane. But yes, there's our fancy cocktail drink. It's literally just a shot of tequila. We're gonna go into the editing room and see what all these cameras really did and how they all compare. Let's go. Welcome everyone to the new editing suite here in LA. This is the first time we're actually shooting here, so I'm pretty excited. With the two different phones, there's two different ways to get them onto your computer. With Apple phones, of course, everyone knows about AirDrop. It's pretty easy to do. You don't need Wi-Fi. You just need a Mac OS system to transfer it. If you have Google Pixel and you have Google Photos, you should have all your footage backed up and saved up and synced to Google Photos. So when you log into photos.google.com on the website here, it'll all be there. And in terms of the workflow speed and the process, they each had the same, roughly around the same amount of clips, which is like 35 to 40 clips. And I found out that downloading the Pixel 4 footage straight from Google Photos was so much faster than AirDrop. 
However, my internet connection is a little bit different, so it might be different for you. But first, before we look at the footages and analyze them, I wanted to let you know real quick about our sponsors for the video, MZ. If you haven't heard about them, thank me later because they have over 200 hours of masterclass filmmaking courses. So if you wanna learn about lighting, framing, directing, editing, color grading, they got you, you name it. And there's also some free ones on the site right now as well. When I first started out with filmmaking, Phil Bloom was someone I really respected and looked up to because of his knowledge on video. And lucky for you, he's gonna be teaching a course on MZ, teaching photographers on how to get more into the video world. Oh yes, welcome, because there's so much to learn. This is a premium course that you could bundle with your MZ Pro subscription and use a total of 20 to get that major discount. You welcome. I'm really excited to see what you guys are learning because I am always learning myself as well. Just like we're gonna learn about what this phone footage looks like. Let's get back to the video, shall we? First up, the Pixel 4. You might have seen a lot of phone comparison videos already, but I feel like a lot of them do put them in the best situations, which is like outside, broad daylight. Yes, we did shoot this outside with natural light, but I really wanted to test out its low light capabilities and see if there was noise in the shadows and see what these phones are actually capable of. I definitely see pixelating happening in the black shirt and in the shadows, all the highlights look okay. Video stabilization on the Pixel 4 isn't too bad, isn't the best either. You could tell I'm definitely going handheld. But that autofocus, it's nailing autofocus like crazy, even though I'm moving the camera around and I didn't even touch the screen. I feel like it just knew. Yeah, the worst part about this footage, I think, is the shadows. It's kind of grainy, kind of like you could see square pixels in it happening in this shirt here but it focuses really close and you can see the details for sure. Colors are pretty decent as well. Look at that orange, it's hella sharp. Oh, see the blacks don't look too bad here. I guess it depends how you expose it, but you could see some noise like in this area, but this looks really good. Anytime there's a shot of the orange, man. Don't really zoom in while you're shooting video though. It does not look the best, ugh, ugh. Oh, some slow-mo, let's test this slow-mo. Pouring some ice, but I mean, a lot of things look better in slow-mo, especially if there's an action happening. But then you also get these problems, especially with smartphones that you'll see like a light flicker happening because it doesn't really sync up with lights. I think there was lights getting, yeah, there was a light right here. So you see it a lot in smartphones because you can't really change the shutter. If those lights weren't on, we would have been fine. But yeah, not so bad. The sharpness doesn't look the best in slow-mo, but it's fun to watch regardless. It focuses on this condensation really well and you can see all the little mini droplets. It's hella sharp. That's crazy. Boom, nailed that autofocus right on there. The bubbles are sharp. It's not hunting. I think it's really good autofocus, this Pixel 4. Definitely not the best when it comes to low light. Not the best when it comes to slow-mo, but it's crispy, yo, it's crispy. Let's move on to the iPhone 11 footage now. I have high hopes for this one because I've, hear, I've heard a lot of good things. Okay, same thing, I see some some green in the t-shirt and in the shadows, but I feel like the green is very much more fine and not so like in your face. Image stabilization, whoo, not bad. This is gimbal quality video stabilization. Yeah, it's kind of struggling. I've noticed that it was kind of struggling with autofocus. Like in this shot, I wanted it here, but then it moved over to the tequila bottle. Yeah, this one was kind of hunting its focus, but thank God it <laughs> nailed the focus when the line was cut, because I would've had to do that over again. All right, time for slow-mo. I feel like, yeah, you see the flicker from the light again happening. Pretty typical. In the skin right here, there's some sort of weird artifacts happening where it's not as sharp and clean lines. Yeah, pretty good close-ups. Details are fine. Slow-mo, again, we lose some sharpness there. You see flickering, there's noise in the shadows. But those little drops floating in slow-mo look pretty good if you wanna ignore everything else that's going on with this. And then again, there's like some weird artifacts happening here with his arm, which is so strange. Did that happen in the Pixel 4? No, his arms look 
clean lines. Clean lines. Moving on. Oh, I really like this shot. The details with the salt and the cinnamon though. Looks so yummy. That footage is yummy. Again, it focuses pretty close here. Some good depth of field. Colors on the iPhone are still, I feel like, for skin tones, a lot more pinkish, orangish, reddish than I would like, but you could always color correct that later in post. I feel like the Pixel 4 has more like true to the eye colors. Those bubbles, those close-ups on those bubbles look crispy. Ooh, this shot is so good. Look at that slow-mo. Oh, slow-mo with smoke and fire, you can't go wrong. A little overexposed. Looks like maybe three colors in the flame. I wish there was more dynamic range in there. And the best part about the iPhone 11 is, of course, you could change, if you want to, you could change focal lengths while recording. So you could go from wide to whatever their normal is and then their telephoto while recording so you could change it. It's crazy. You could also set it and turn it off in the settings as well. Look at that, pretty crispy. Also, if you wanted to know, the iPhone 11 does have 4K60, which is something that the Pixel 4 does not have. Here's some tests with it outside in broad daylight and perfect conditions. You can never go wrong with broad daylight and smartphone footage. Baila, baila, baila. For me, I really like the colors on the Pixel 4. I like how fast it focuses on the Pixel 4. It's not the best in low light. So once low light hits, I think I'm gonna just have to go straight DSLR for any of those shots. <sighs> I do miss out on the ultra wide, but the moment lens is an option. The slow-mo isn't the best, but I don't really see myself using slow-mo on my phone as much as I would with my normal camera. I'd definitely pick the iPhone 11 if I had to do a lot of walking, moving shots where I need image stabilization and I had a lot of big open spaces that I wanted to capture with the wide lens and get some crazy funky angles too. I'm like really trying to pick one, but I can't. But we're gonna move on to the Z6 because my brain's about to explode. I think we shot this one, it was like dark outside too. Let's see. By the way, this is ISO 10,000. For the most part, I shot it between manual focus and autofocus. Noise, not so bad. That's what the Nikon is really good at is these low light shoots. And I actually really like the lighting in the bokeh. This was on the 24 to 70 2.8 lens. Oh, the details, the sharpness, they look so good. I know I'm like trying to pick between phones, but this is why you would invest couple thousand for a DSLR. But those blacks are pretty black. Not that much grain whatsoever. Yeah, bokeh looks really good. The edges over here look pretty clean. It's like a nice gradient between the edges and like the backdrop. And the skin tones on this look a little bit more yellowy orange and I think that's because of the light that's on them too. Every camera is different and has their special features. You really gotta know what you need out of a camera before you just go and say this one's better or you should get this one because every person's style is different, every person's needs are different, every person's budget's different. So I think all in all, I would rate the Pixel 4 with the best autofocus and also sharpness and detail. For low light, I think the iPhone wins in the low light category. For slow-mo, the iPhone probably takes slow-mo. For colors, I would have to go with the Pixel 4. It's just something I've been used to all this time is that I just like less saturated look. But if you like that more saturated look and warm skin tones, then pick the iPhone 11, of course. And then you can't forget that the iPhone 11 has that option for ultra wide. If I wanna carry gimbal with my Pixel and have a moment lens on it to get the same quality as I can with just the iPhone 11. It's really hard to weigh and it depends really on what I'm shooting. It's tough, man. 
I wanna know what you guys think in the comments below. I honestly just want to mix the features together to create my own phone. Hopefully you learned something here. Thanks for hanging out with me. If you wanna watch more of my videos, please do. I'd be forever grateful. You do you fam, and I'll see you when I see you. Mm, done.